Hello and welcome again. We are dealing with the uh, Replenish the Earth, the Ministry Life Cycle, and we are finalizing our discussion on growth. For our discussion on growth, we're dealing now with the learning process, which can take a person through things that they've already re reviewed in times past, but need to review again. And sometimes this is a frustrating process because you've been through this before and you thought you knew it. And so um, the Word of God is the thing that provides the comfort during this time so that people don't get discouraged in this process. So just understand the Lord's chastening. Um, sometimes He's looking at things like the motivation of an individual's heart. Um, so let's say you've done something before and your motivation was not all the way that it needed to be. Sometimes the Lord will allow you to go through a similar process again so that you can pass the test. Maybe you didn't fully pass the test the first time. So with that, um, now we're going to shift from the learning process into the establishment of identity. And we'll be here in the establishment of identity for a moment. Um, where there is no audience, the true motivation for ministry is uncovered. And when I think of this statement, I think of David being in uh, the field. And the only audience he had was God and the sheep. And for the most part, you know, because he had God, he had the sheep, he was motivated to take care of those sheep and do everything that he could for them. Um, he sang and he worshipped out in that field. And so that's something that we need to be thinking about when we are ministering. Is it the same when there's an audience versus when there isn't an audience? So we're going to move on to exposure. Remember, we started out in the development process. And when you think of a picture and if the picture is being developed, um, if there's too much exposure, the, the picture doesn't come out real nice. Okay, so... We have to look at exposure. Um, so too much exposure to the development side of ministry makes one an expert at being developed, but a novice at actually doing the work. We need hands-on in this season. We can't go out there to the world audience without skill. You'll be known. And fear has a voice, and when given opportunity to be heard, it can speak and pro or project a destiny. Just like faith can project destiny, fear can project into the future, just like faith can. So we have to be mindful about our identity and what God says about us. Okay, so without proper exposure to the light, our growth will be deformed or dwarfed. And so, and there is benefit um, to being anointed and waiting on the Lord for impartition, uh, impartation before we move. Um, if you're too hasty, then you may not have gotten the entire message. This reminds me of the young man that ran with a partial message at the end of a war. And when the king asked him, you know, well, what's the message? And he pretty much said, Hail King, live forever. And that wasn't the message that he was supposed to be giving. In fact, the truth is he was running without a message. He was just running because he knew there was a message to give. Um, consequently, another person, another runner had to come and tell the king what the actual message was. My point in mentioning this is in the establishment of identity, it's important to rely and wait on God's timing to produce the full and complete work so that you have the full release. Um, again, I mentioned about frustrating frustrations that person might have. Um, and you want to wait, you want to take off, but you're in a holding pattern like a plane. You're driving, you're flying around in circles and you feel like you're not going anywhere. Well, um, sometimes God has us in holding patterns. I remember um, in the book of Ezekiel, uh, for about 490 days, this prophet um, spent time laying down. And he got a word from God and the next thing the Lord told him to do was to lay down on one side. I can't remember if he started on the right side or the left side, but he had to lay down there and he had to lay down there for a couple of hundred days. And then he was instructed to get up and he thought he was getting ready to go somewhere. And then the Lord told him, okay, lay on your other side. And the total amount of time was approximately 490 days. And then after that, that's when God said, okay, get up and you can now go and do what it is I need for you to do. So a holding pattern is a moment where people are just kind of sitting in one spot and um, and when you, if you have a holding pattern, just remain encouraged. God has not forgotten you. He knows timing. He has to settle the ground and every situation associated with that. 
So make sure you partner with God through prayer and fasting. Be specific. Be very, very intentional at intentional as you set your objectives for ministry. Um, it's better to have a relay race than a team of one. And that means the alignment of vision with people. Um, sometimes if you are in a holding pattern, it could be related to the other people that need to be in place to support you. Um, I've seen ministries where there's one person doing everything. Well, that can happen, but after a while that person may get a little bit tired. So, um, you know, it's important to have people that can assist um, with you in the process of ministry. And then, you know, you get to offer the best form of ministry that's available. Okay? Um, and there are several scriptures that are here listed. Um, I want you to go ahead and take time to read through these scriptures. Um, Exodus 15, chapter verses 19 uh, to 21. Joshua 6, verse 19 to 21. And then 1 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 31 to 33. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the um, First Chronicles 6, verse 31 and 33. Um, these are the men David put in charge of the music in the house of the Lord after the ark came to rest there. They ministered with music before the temple, the tent of meeting, until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They performed their duties according to the regulations laid down for them. Um, here are the men who served together for their sons from the Kohathites, Heman, the musician, the son of Joel, and the son of Samuel. So, and the list goes on and on. The purpose is to understand that there is systematic and this order and this fashion um, that w when you're preparing for a celebration, and it's never just, if it's a big celebration, it's never just one person. All right? Okay. Um, as a result of doing this, you're going to get clear a clear visual of what needs to happen right getting a clear visual of where the music and arts department sits within the organization is crucial to its structure and development and future growth and David provides this excellent example in um, in in the book of Chronicles that we that are you know preparing departments for ministry should follow or could follow okay on that note, I'm going to pause and then we're going to pick right back up again with another set of examples that help us with the establishment of objective in the music and arts ministry. Again, we're dealing with growth, the life cycle of ministry in Replenish the Earth.